you know, it's a good thing, man, and, and they're a blessing to me, and and uh, I did youth ministry for 10 years straight, uh, 1995 to 2010, or 2005, and uh, uh, I know what it's like to be a youth leader, and it's it was a lot of fun, and some of these guys that are helping out, Crystal and Josiah and uh, Brianna, they were in my youth group, so... <laughs> So it's pretty cool to see them uh, yeah. being a part of that. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you something. You know, I uh, I look back at, at my youth, and, and some of you obviously got to look way back, but I look back. Uh, <laughs> Start off on the right foot. I knew that did everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you take that back. Well, I'll take that back. I'm sorry. I apologize. Forgive me. Forgive me. I went too far. But uh, I look back and I think, you know, yeah, there was things that, you know, I struggled with or things that were taking place. But, I mean, the pressure to perform now, like in the days that we live in now with, with the kids, with the young people, and just the, the demonic attack. You know, on our youth and just the, the easiness it is for perversion and garbage and all this junk, the disrespect a lot of the youth have towards adults now. When it, when I, was, I was afraid to cuss around adults when I was a kid, but, you know, um, you know just the, the craziness that goes on. And I, and I look at our youth and, and, and I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest with you. I look at these young people and you see the love of the Lord in their lives, yeah. man. I mean, you can see it. They really do have a heart for God. I know they do. They're not just up here saying that or, you know, whatever. But they really do. Yeah, yes, and I t I'm around them enough and I talk to them enough and I see them enough that you can just see the love of God and you can see the pursuit and the passion yes. that they really do have for the Father. Yes. And it's a blessing. And so, you know, you guys that are praying and giving and doing things for our youth group, you know, just continue to pray for them because things are happening. I mean, there's going to be, you're going to see some of these young people in the future Grow up and minister the gospel. I mean, you're going to see him working in ministry, and you're going to see all kinds of stuff taking place. So it's a blessing. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for your love. I thank you for the testimonies from the young people, Lord, and the, yeah. even the ones that didn't share that represented that got touched, God. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for their lives. And Lord, I speak. we speak blessing over them, Lord. We speak favor over them. We speak love over them. We speak... Lord God, that your anointing just develops and grows stronger and stronger in them, Lord. And that they see the path that you have for them, Lord. Your word says that you're a lamp into our, your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And Lord, I thank you that they see that path and they continue to follow and yes. pursue you, God. And I thank you that the fire has been stirred on the inside of them, Lord. And I thank you that the Holy Ghost continues to move strongly in their life, Lord. We bless them. And we bless the leaders. We bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Turn over to Proverbs chapter 3. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3. Praise God. Man, this morning was, a, was just an awesome service this morning. The Holy Spirit was just moving mightily this morning. And, um, you know, it was, it was just, I was just, I was just talking, <coughs> excuse me. I was talking with Monica earlier and I thought to myself, Man, that was just, I had a strange word of knowledge this morning. Every once in a while, I get this real strange one. Some, a lot of them are pretty normal, but sometimes they're real strange. And, and this morning, that word of knowledge about you know, someone under the age of 12 stepping on a nail with their bare foot, <laughs> you know, <laughs> on their right foot. I mean, it was so specific and so detailed. And there was like about six or seven people that responded to that. And God just, I really believe God just moved emotionally in their lives, healed them with some emotional deals and some things that took place when they were children. And, just some stuff like that. It was pretty cool. And I was sharing that with Monica. And she goes, she goes, uh, I stepped on a nail when I was a little kid on my right foot. <laughs> I was under 12. And I said, and I just reached over and smacked her and said, whatever they got, Lord, give it to her. I was laying down taking a nap. So I really wasn't <laughs> was trying to pray too long of a prayer. I was trying to rest. Amen. But she got whacked by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that was good. He touched her. Amen. But that was just a strange, strange word this morning. But. You know, it's so cool how God does things. He's, he moves in patterns in our lives. And if you'll pay attention, I want to talk about this for a little bit here. I just, just came up in me, so let's talk about this for a little bit. 
I've noticed in my life that, that I'm starting to, there, God's starting to develop patterns in my life and ways that he talks to me, the things that he does in my life, um, things that he shares. And a lot, and all of us are different. He talks to us. It's the same God, but he talks to us different. Sometimes, you know, some of you, maybe you move in dreams a lot more. Some of you uh, have a pattern of having dreams. Some of you have a pattern of seeing things. You have visions. Uh, some of you have a pattern of, of uh, you know, uh, him just talking to you with his voice by the Holy Spirit and, you know, speaking to you and stuff like that. But I've noticed in my life, there's been a pattern that's been developing in my life where God has been talking to me as I wake up out of my sleep. And it's happened several times over the past probably, I don't know, um, eight, nine years, ten years or so. It's happened several times. But I've noticed it recently happening a lot more, like very frequently. And um, <clears throat> just I've already had it happen to me twice just in three days. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know why he does that, but I've noticed that the pattern in my life. Pay attention to patterns. Yes. And another pattern in my life, I noticed that that I get a lot of words of knowledge when I'm in a service, in a meeting, a church meeting, like we're in tonight. They come to me a lot. And I was asking God about that the other day. How come God, because I was talking with Tad yesterday about this, I want to do stuff out in the marketplace too. Like I want to see things, I want to hear things, I want to pray for people. I want, I want God to minister to people if, if he wants to do that, use me to do that while I'm out and about, wherever, and, you know, shopping or whatever. And... It doesn't happen a lot. It happens very few, far in between, that it happens when I'm outside the church here. And uh, I was asking God the other day, God, why is that? And he spoke to me a couple days ago and he said, He said, I use you where I've called you, where I've called you to be is where I use you. Your calling is in the local church. That's where your gift's gonna expand. That's where your gift's gonna be in motion. That's where your gift's gonna function. And not all of us are called to be pastors, and I understand that. So what I'm trying to say to you today is, listen, don't think you've got to be a jack of all trades Amen. for God. Okay. You don't got to do everything. That's right. Okay? You, you can have what he says you can have in his word. You can flow in the gifts of the spirit, things like that. That's for everybody. We can have that function in our life to a certain capacity. Amen. Now, of course, some of us are called to be, pro you know, there's different callings, prophets, you know, there's, there's different callings. The Bible does say, be ready in, due, in season and now season to do the work of the evangelist. Dad talked about that a little bit this morning. So we can all evangelize. We can all share the gospel, share the love of Jesus Christ to people when we need to. That's fine. We can all do that. But know where God has called you and know you don't have to do everything for God. Function. And let him function in you. Let him move in you in the place that he's called you to function. Don't try to do everything for God all the time. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. So if you'll start to pay attention, you'll start to notice that there'll be these patterns start to develop in your life. And when you start to realize these patterns, stay open to them. Stay yield to them. Let's say just, Lord, yes, I'm, I'm recognizing that you like to use me in this area. And this is how you talk to me. This is how you speak to me. This is, how, this is what you show me. You know, start to be open to those things. And you're going to see those things. I'm prophesying to you. I'm speaking to you tonight. You're going to start to see those things grow in that. Stick with that. Amen. Don't try to do something else. Stick with what God has already been uh, showing you and doing within, in you right now. You know, and, this, and like, for instance, today I woke up out of my sleep, out of my nap this afternoon. I woke up and I heard, now this is going to bless you tonight. I heard the voice of the Lord say to, to me, and, and, and it's concerning the body of Christ as well. It goes out to the body of Christ. He says, now this is going to sound strange to you because it did sound strange to me at first too. And I thought, well, wait a minute here. That doesn't almost, that doesn't even really sound biblical. But it is. He said, you're not being persecuted you're being propelled. God. Propelled means to push forward, to go forward. Amen. To go forward. God is propelling us. We're not being persecuted as Christians and as the body of Christ. We're being propelled. God is moving us forward. That was a blessing to me this, this, morning, this afternoon when I woke up out of my nap this afternoon. I needed to hear that. 
No matter what the enemy tries to do to you, God's propelling you. He's beating you forward. Amen. He's moving you forward. <laughs> Get the image of that. The, the, the devil's just trying to catch up. God's moving you forward. Amen. We don't even pay attention to the persecution. We don't even pay attention to the lies, the blasts. We don't pay attention to any of it. We let God propel us and move us forward. Amen. 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 Huh? That is scriptural. It is scriptural. The Bible says uh, that uh, we let, if we let the uh, things happening around us, um, oh, how is it put? Uh, while we don't look at the things that are seen, but the things These that are not seen, seen mm -hmm. uh, it says that, that the things coming against us will work for us. The things that are coming against us will work for us. Yes, amen. I haven't had time to, to sit down and study it out or anything like that. It happened right before service, but it's true. We're moving forward. We've just got to trust the Lord. We've got to trust God. You know, just the past few days of my life, personally, I've just... I've got God download so much to me and just bless me and show me things about my life. I've had him give me revelation that has absolutely revolutionized my life and even the ways of thinking in some areas. You've heard me talk about this for months here personally about my personal life. Just wanting God to help me, asking him for answers, you know, asking him, seeking him, going before him. And he's just been doing such a mighty work. And I believe he's doing such a mighty work in the body of Christ. Yeah. And he's so, he's so faithful, guys. God is so faithful. His love, his mercy is beyond what we can even imagine. His love and his grace for you, no matter where you've been, what you've done, what you've said, how you've acted, you, you've come to him. He loves you. And he just pours out his favor on you because he loves you. And he sees your heart and your heart's for him. That's all he requires. That's all he asks is I want your heart. I want your heart. He's a loving father, isn't he? Amen. He is. Now look at here in Proverbs chapter three. Look at verse one. It says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Now listen to verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. Does it say anywhere in there, In all your ways be perfect and He'll direct your path? <laughs> no. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Amen. All your ways, whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever happens, acknowledge Him. If you get out of line, get back into line. Amen. And keep going. That word there, look at verse 5, it says, that first word there in verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord. Trust. When you trust in the Lord, that's when the promotion of God will come into your life. He has no choice but to promote you, spirit, soul, and body. He has no choice but to help you in areas in your life when you trust Him. See, for years, I mean, honestly, I, you know, I love the Lord and I'm following Him and I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Praise God for salvation. I've got that settled and that's correct and that's right and, and I'm following God and this and that. But listen, we can say we trust God, but do we really trust God? I'm having to learn that. Have I really been trusting the Lord? Really? And when I'm not living in peace, I don't find that I'm really trusting Him like I should be trusting Him. And I'm learning how to trust Him. And you, I don't know if you noticed this today, but this morning and this evening, there was a lot of words about holding the Father's hand and going with Him. He's wanting the church of Jesus Christ to not look at the turmoil that's going on in the world, but to look to Him. Amen. And trust Him as a honoring, loving, grace and mercy Father. I'm, I'm just staring at the Scripture when Jesus said, without Him I can do nothing. I'm just eating that Scripture right now because it's so true. Without Him I can do absolutely nothing. 
I can't live in peace. I can't be the right father I need to be. I can't be the right husband I need to be. I can't be the right minister I need to be. I can't even follow God correctly if I, just, if I don't look to him. It really comes. This is wild. I know. I, I, it is. But it really comes down to a full, full, full out surrender. That's right. Amen. <laughs> And when you start to do that, you'll start to notice, like I'm noticing in my life, you'll start to notice stuff that you didn't even know was there starts to come up and God starts dealing with it and starts inking it out of you. Amen. When we started the year 2016, I knew it was a new beginning. I knew it was a new shift. I knew, it was, I knew that there was an, open, an open, open door was being opened. A new door was being opened for the body of Christ and, and, back and, 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 and doors behind us were being slammed closed. And we were getting ready to go through. God made it so apparent to me. I mean, he would give me dreams. He would give me visions. I mean, I would see things, hear things. I mean, there was even a, wind, a whirlwind that as I was standing on the back alley here of the church, I walked out the back door to throw something away in the dumpster. And all of a sudden, I heard this. And I thought, what in the world? And I looked around and it was it, there was no wind at all. It was just a dry day or whatever. It was like in May or something like that. And I looked down the alley all of a sudden I see this dirt, dust devil or whatever you call those things, whirlwinds or whatever little ones, I saw this thing blowing and I stood there and I watched that thing blow right by me and what, what, what I, well, the first thing I did was I looked up at the American flag that's hanging up at the bank right here in the corner and it was just laying out like this it wasn't even moving, there was no wind and I watched this thing go right down the alley, go right on to Yosemite Avenue and then it was over with and the Lord spoke to me immediately and he said, my winds of change are here. Hallelujah. I'm blowing on America. I'm blowing. And it goes right along with that vision I had back last summer of whirlwinds hovering over every state. I was looking at the map of the United States, and I saw whirlwinds hovering over every state, right in the center of the state, getting ready to touch down. God is doing something. He is talking to the body of Christ. He's talking to us as individuals. He's having us, see, listen, he does this for our own good. He corrects us and wants to develop us for our own good and not just for us, but for others. Amen. And I'll tell you, a lot of you guys in this place have lived through some stuff. You've gone through some things. You've experienced some things in your life where God is going to use you to minister to others that, have, that are going through the same experience, the same trial the same storm god is going to use you you've got to rely and trust in the lord that he has your words he has an enough anointing in you that he'll use you to bless others praise god Amen. god is preparing the body of christ he's preparing his bride we are his bride and believe me he wants many 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 more brides to come in hallelujah Amen. That's why he's raising us up for the harvest time. It's like mom said this morning, we think of harvest and it is good to rejoice during harvest. It's a great thing, but there's a lot of work during harvest. I grew up with a lot of friends that their, their fathers were farmers. And man, they would tell me about how they worked from sun up to sundown, uh, even past sundown, seven days a week for three or four months straight. Because they got to get that product in. They got to get that harvest in. And it's work. And it's grimy, and it's nasty sometimes, and it's tough. But let me tell you something. Whoo, glory to God. It's rewarding. It's rewarding. You're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Folks, I can't speak for everybody in here, but I can speak for myself. And, but I can say this. I know this because I know a lot of y'all. And I know that you and me, we're breaking through, guys. Amen. Amen. We're breaking through the, what the enemy had for us, the traps that he has set, the things that maybe he's tried to hold us in bondage. They're being broke off if you're pursuing God. Because he knows the time is right. The time is now. Like these kids were saying, the time is now. Where there's a revolution in the, in the glory starting. There's an outbreak of the glory that's starting. Things are starting to happen. I don't know about you, but it, a week does not go by here where someone at least does not get healed. See, we just take that for granted sometimes. Because we're so used to it. But I've talked to people recently that they've never, they haven't seen a healing in their church in probably 15 plus years. 
But we see one every we see at least somebody get healed every week, at least one person. And it's always more than one. But see, something's brewing. And it's gonna grow, 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 grow. Yes, I agree. Amen. It's gonna grow. Yes, it is. It's gonna explode. Amen. I've been sitting down this week reading over words that have been spoken over this ministry here. And just, I mean, it's like I'm going, what? Whoa. I forgot about that. We've had some wild prophecies from men and women of God that have come through here over the years. That will stand the test of time and are accurate and are correct. Some have happened already and some are going to be happening. But folks, I'm telling you, there's been prophecies where, I mean, limbs growing out, uh, mentally retarded children being healed right before our faces, stuff like that. I'm hungry for that. And these men that have spoke these prophetic words, we know them personally. And we know the character they have. And we know their track record. And they're prophets. Larry Huggins is one of them. There's another man by the name of Tim Tanner. He used to come to our church uh, back when I was a little kid, when we first started for, for several years there. Some of you remember him. Sister Carol remembers him. But I mean, he gave a word. That's, that's why. Whoa. The day's coming. The day's coming, man. I just read a word the other day on the Elijah list <coughs> about the influx, the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, uh, uh, there's just going to be a mass of, of people coming out of drugs and alcohol and devil and satanic cults and all that, coming to, the, coming to church and coming out of that and coming into the kingdom. And in this word... This lady was given this prophetic word and she was given this prophetic word. She said the Lord spoke to her and, and told her to, to tell the body of Christ to not reject them, but to receive them. Amen. Yeah, yeah, to receive. And help them get delivered because they're going to want to be delivered. Amen. And to not be harsh on them immediately and try to make them change. But give them time as the Holy Spirit works on them. Amen. And you know what? I read this a few days ago. And as I was reading this, I heard Pastor Tom Terry He's preached this message. It's called, he calls it the Lazarus generation. He's preached this message for 20 years. Yeah. That God gave him vision and showed him that those kind of people are going to be coming to the kingdom, flooding churches because they're going to be coming out of the occult and out of all kinds of wild stuff. And then we need to be ready for them. Yep. I believe that. Yes. I think about that daily pretty much. About I want to be prepared and ready for them, God. And the thing is, is God's going to use us to help them get delivered. We're just going to love on them. It's going to break off change, break off devils, break off this sickness, disease, addiction, Amen. all that stuff. They don't have to go through some deliverance course where we find out what demon is that, what, what's the name of the demon in them and all that stupid stuff. We're just going to love them, receive them, lay hands on them. But here's the thing, what's going to change them is they're going to be hungry and they're going to want change. That's what's going to change them. That's what's going to make it good for us because we're going to like, oh, good. All right. Well, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> be healed, be set free in Jesus. name. Amen? Amen. So, see, God is preparing the body. He spoke to us this morning and said it's time to put our boots on. And I was wild when that came out of me because that just came out of me. I wasn't even thinking that. All of a sudden, I hear myself going, it's time to put your boots on. And I'm going, all right. But what I saw when I said that, I saw the body of Christ in rank and in line like soldiers do. And I saw standing there when I said that with their boots on and going forward and moving forward. No matter what the enemy was trying to set, the trap, the mud, the yuck, the gunk, those boots that they were wearing, they were going right through that. They were marching on in the harvest. They were marching on. Doing the will of God, proclaiming the Lord, proclaiming Jesus, proclaiming the gospel. They were going forward and bringing deliverance to the captives. That's what I saw in my spirit when I began to say that. Time to put our boots on. And then there was a prophetic word that went along with that. I don't recall it. I'll have to listen to it again. But 
There was, a, there was a prophetic declaration. See, Dad got up here Wednesday night and he preached Isaiah 21, 6. That's the scriptures God gave me of October of last year before we entered into the first year that we need to stand our watch, be the watchman, and we need to declare what God is showing us. It's your job on a daily basis if God shows you something to declare and decree that that's going to happen in the name of Jesus. And you know what's awesome is the Bible, the Word of God. It's right here. You can read a scripture like, let's say, uh, 1 Peter 2, 24. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. If you stand there and you declare that enough and you believe that enough and you receive that enough, you will have healing in your body. That's what I did. That's why I was healed of leukemia. Amen. Because the Word's true. You take a scripture that God's showing you out of His Word. He's wanting to minister to you. And you decree and declare it. The Bible says that when you decree a thing, it'll be established. Yeah. The Word of God is established. It's not going to go away. It's never going to end. It's never going to be put to death. No. It is there. It will never be erased. It's established. And what God has said is there for us if we want it. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But we've got to trust in Him. we got to trust that He knows the will, the plan, and the purpose for our life. we got to trust in Him that He knows how to get us from point A to point B, praise God. We've got to trust Him. Amen. We've got to lay our thoughts down, what we feel, what we see, and we got to know that He is a loving Father. There is a revelation that came to me the past couple, that came to me the past couple days that has revolutionized my life. And I can't prove it to you because only I know how I feel. And what's going on in this big old meat computer in my, in my head. <laughs> but I have come to this truth in my life. And this might help someone, so I'm just going to share it. I have come to this truth in my life that Mike Purcell is not responsible to fulfill the plan of God for my life. That's right. I'm not responsible for it. Because I can't do it. That's right. It's God's responsibility to take me through life as I follow Him, yep. as I trust Him, as I come before Him. It's His responsibility to see to it that I get to where I need to get to concerning the call of God in my life. Amen. It's not my job. It's not my job. It's not your job. You're not responsible. The devil comes. Well, I'm going to give you cancer. That's not my responsibility. That's, you talk to God about that. I'm not, I, you know, it's, it's, it's his job. His responsibility to take care of me. So you have no right to say anything to me. I'm not your child. It's not my responsibility to get me healed. No. It's not your responsibility to get you healed. Right. Right. Your only job is to pray and obey mm -hmm. and to trust yep. that His word's true. Yep. Well, what about this? Well, no! -uh! This is a lesson I learned going through leukemia in 2008. It was either rest in Him. Or drive myself into the grave. I don't know how else to say it to you guys. I rested in him. I rested in him because I knew there was nothing I could do about it but look to him. That's all I could do. I had no other. Ch I had no nothing else I could do. I couldn't make myself feel better. I couldn't make my blood get better. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was look to God and rest in His Word and know that it's true. That is warfare. You can have warfare laying on your back with your eyes closed and your arms folded and not saying a word. <laughs> well, how can you? How is that? You're resting in the Lord. You're trusting in Him. You know, you've got to know that He's going to take care of you. You've got to know that He's going to do it. God is not a liar. He 
when the devil throws a curveball or throws some kind of monkey wrench in your pathway, it's not your responsibility to demolish the devil. It's your responsibility to follow God and to speak the word of truth. And the Bible says to rebuke Satan, he'll go from you, he'll flee from you and start terror, it says. And you just keep going and you do the word. And you trust that the word of God is true and the devil is fleeing and the devil is leaving. And if you need more revelation on that in your life, on how to deal with the devil or something like that, ask God. He'll show you. See, that's the awesome thing about God is He doesn't just throw us down on earth and say, good luck, have fun, I hope you get it. Amen. No. He puts us here and He gives us His Word. And He says, you have not because you ask God. He says, come to me boldly, man. Come to me anytime. That veil was torn when my son hung on the cross. Amen. Death was defeated. The veil was torn. Now it's me and you. You can have a relationship with me personally. Amen. See, what's happening is this. And I know it's happening to a lot of us, really, including me for sure. We're starting to get over ourselves. Because ourselves, not that we're haughty or prideful or arrogant, that's not what I mean. But we've tried to do it ourselves. How do I get out of fear? i got to figure this out. There's something I'm doing. There's something that's not right. And God's going... Just rest in me and I'll deliver you. I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. And if I need to talk to you, Mike, I'll reveal something to you that will help you. If I don't, just stay with me. But we're getting over ourselves, I think a lot of us. And we're coming in to that man, that woman of God. We've been there. We're, we are his man. We are his woman. We're, we're there. We're, we're his children. We're doing all that. But there's a difference when we become totally free and become, listen, this is what I'm learning. I'm learning how to be totally dependent on the Father. Amen. It's like Pastor Brian, when he was here a couple weeks ago, that word he gave out of Proverbs, I believe it was Proverbs chapter 8, verse 2. It says, that you become like babes and sucklings. Like you, you, you come to the Lord as a little child. You worship as a child. You're his child. There's no fear, no worries. Because he's your father. He's your dad. He's going to take care of you. Yeah. I used to run around as a kid, not one time ever think about, I hope we can pay the electric bill this month. I just watched TV and used everything that was in the refrigerator, praise God. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I needed to do. I wasn't concerned. Turn the light on so I could see. You know, I wasn't concerned about, well, if I turn this light on, this, well, I don't know, it might go up a cent. You know, I don't, I, you know. But see, we've got to become like that with our Father and our lives. God will take care of us. He is taking care of us. That's why you're here right now. His hand's on you. He loves you. He's blessed you. He's brought people into your life to love you. He's brought people into your life to bless you. He's, he's put you in a good local church where God will love, love on you and people will, you know, he, we, we get together. He's blessed us. He'll take care of us. But full reliance. And there's a lot of mind, a lot of things, a lot of ways of thinking that all of us have developed over time in our lives that have hindered us. And I've been asking God to reveal those things to me and to get those things out of my mind because I don't want to be hindered following Him. I want to get to the fullness of what He's called me to get to. Amen. But the way I'm learning how to get to that, and this might sound wild because we've been taught so much, well, you've got to get out and get things done and do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. I'm learning the opposite for me if I'll rest in Him is when I'll be at my peak, is when I'll be able to do what He's called me to do when I rest in Him. And I'm not just talking about taking a nap. When you need to take naps, that's great. You need to take a day off, you have to. You got to. Like Andrew said, set your phone down. Turn the TV off. Because I'm telling you, whatever the Lord's talking to you about, do it. Because listen, I've noticed just the past couple days, I've noticed 
And he's wanting to pull me away with him just by himself. More and more. Hello? <laughs> yes, Lord? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some of you are sensing this, though. You're sensing God has been wanting you. He's been pulling you away just to be with him. Go with it. Amen. He's done so much in my life in two days. It's so spiritual, so supernatural, it's hard to even explain in the natural right now with my mouth. I can't even explain it. He's done so much in me in two days just because I've rested in him. Hallelujah. And I've let him talk to me and he's answered me of questions that I've been seeking him about and asking him about for months. And it's not that he was holding back saying, I just want him to go through this a couple more months and then I'll tell him. No. The Bible talks about times and seasons with God. There's a time and there's a purpose and there's a season for everything. But we've got to trust Him in that season. Whatever season you're in, you trust Him. When Jesus said, get in the boat, boys, we're going to the other side. He already knew because the Father said to go to the other side. He was settled for Him. The storm came, tried to keep them from getting to the other side. And the disciples freaked. Jesus got out and said, Come on, guys. Rebuke the storm and they went on across. We hear that story a lot. But my heart, when I hear that story, is I want to be like Jesus was in that story. No matter what God has, if God has said something to you about, every single person here, God has said something about your life. At least one thing He has said about your life for your future. At least one thing. That's his plan for your life. No matter what the enemy tries to do, say, taunt you, intimidate you, tries to kill you, it doesn't matter. If God has already said it, that's your destination. And you believe the word. That's why Paul told Timothy, you fight with the word of God that the prophecies that have been spoken over you, you use those against the enemy. Amen. The reason why I know the devil can't kill me it's because I know what God has already showed me about my future. Yes. So when he comes and attacks my mind, well, what if this, what if that, well, what do you, what, blah, 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 all this stuff, it's my job to say, devil, shut up. That's not even my future. I don't serve you. I serve God. He has the plan for my life. And this is what he's already showed me. So that's where I'm headed. That prophetic word hasn't come to pass. So I'm going that direction. Amen. You're a liar. He says the opposite of what God says. Because the devil can't tell the truth. The Bible says he's the father of lies. Amen. So everything he says is a lie and he tries to get us to agree with it. Yeah. Amen. That's why the Bible says, take no thought, saying. <clears throat> he's a deceiver. He's a manipulator. He knows Listen, he knows us better than we, the devil knows us better than we know ourselves. He does. He's had eons of time to study people. He knows your button. I'm not glorifying Satan or anything like that. I'm just saying it's the truth. And it's his job to push your button because he's miserable and he wants you to be miserable. And he knows that he is a squashed, cooked duck. Now I'm just being nice about it because I'm in church. <laughs> but he knows it. And that same fear he tries to get you in, that same intimidation he tries to make you feel or have you succumb to is the same way, listen, body of Christ, it's the same way you make him feel. Because you're following the living Savior. That's why he attacks. Because you put him through torment. The blood crushed him. The blood of Jesus Christ settled it. One million to zero. He loses. He gets nothing. It's over with. He's done. He knows it. Amen. So when you follow Christ, the way it makes him feel, the anger, the hatred, the frustration, the fear, the anxiety, the panic, the misery, that's what it makes him feel because you look to the living Father. That's why he attacks. Because he's full of hate, jealousy, 
There's no love in him. It's the truth. Without the love of God, we're doomed. If we don't walk in love, we're in trouble. Because that same spirit that's on the devil eventually might try to come on us if we don't walk in love. And that's a whole other preaching. That's a whole other message. But we serve a father full of love. And he wants to see to it that you walk hand in hand with him and you fulfill the plan that he has for your life. Yeah. Listen, he will cut off relationships. He'll bring in new relationships. If you'll follow him, yeah. you'll see to it that your life will, it will. It'll be, it'll be, listen. When you follow the Lord, okay, look, listen to what it says right here. here. Here's that scripture right here. Trust in the Lord, verse 5, with all your heart, lead not on your own understanding. <coughs> I can't do it. I, I, God, I'm trying to understand. I'm understanding. I'm understanding. If I do this, if I do, no, don't lean on my own understanding. I can't deliver myself. I've tried for years and it doesn't work. Amen. But when I trust in him that he knows how to help me in this area and I just let it go and I in, listen, I entrust my life and everything going on and I entrust it to Jesus, then he's able to come and block and, 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 and cut off those little anxieties, those little things that attack us. He's able to take care of us when we truly entrust everything to Him. I can't raise my kids without the help of God. I want my kids to serve God. I want my kids to become what God has called them to be. I can't do that by mouthing off to them all the time and trying to preach at them. The only way I can do it is give them to God, worship the Lord, pray for them, let God bring them in. I can give them some instruction. I can give them, you know, if I need to discipline them, I can discipline them or whatever. But I need to hear from God on even how to pray for my own kids. I can't be the husband that God wants me to be if I don't do that either. We've got to surrender everything. We've got to learn how to trust God with everything. Can't lean on our own understanding. We can't figure it out. Even if you right now in your personal life are coming to a deadline where you've got to have something or this has got to be here. Give it to the Lord. Trust Him. Lay it in his lap. He'll see to it that he meets your needs in that area because he loves you. Not because of your track record, but because he loves you. Amen. 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 And he wants to see you blessed. Hallelujah. So in all your ways, acknowledge, verse 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And then it says here, verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And it says this, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Psalms 37 says, do not fret. Be anxious for nothing. Because the Lord sits in the heavens and he sees his people. He sees the evil. He sees the wicked one. And he's getting ready to take care of the wicked one and the evil one. And he's going to bless his people. And then it goes on down later in the chapter there. And it says, God sits in the heavens and he laughs. If God is sitting in the heaven and laughing, then we need to laugh. We need to be joyful. He knows he's got... God knows I got my people. All these people in 2016 in my body, if they'll just read what I've done for the children of Israel, if they'll read what I've done for, for King Jehoshaphat, if they'll read all this stuff I've done for these people over time, Paul, Silas, Peter, John, all these men, all these women that have gone through time, if they'll just even look back and tap into some of that and see how well I protected them, Amen. they have nothing to be concerned about. Nothing to be concerned about. <sighs> we serve a loving God. We serve a loving God. 
And it's my prayer tonight and my heart tonight to declare over you guys that we will learn, all of us, that we'll learn how to lean on our own understanding. We'll learn to rest in the Father's arms. We'll learn to rest. No matter what storm is going on in your life, no matter what trial you're facing, no matter what's going on, God has the answer. And when the thoughts come up, oh man, this is going to be trouble, or oh, how is this going to work, or there's no way, or this, all this fear junk when it comes up from the enemy. It's our job to say, devil, <laughs> shut up. Don't talk to me about it. Talk to my father. Because I'm resting in him. He's in me and I'm in him. The devil will back off. I probably said yesterday at least 50 to 60 times probably, devil, that's not my responsibility. And went on. Well, why would you do that? Because he comes at your mind with fear and tries to give you thoughts about certain things. So I would just stop. The devil, it's not my responsibility. Talk to God. I serve him. And I would just go on. Amen. And it lessened and lessened and lessened even today. See, Dad knows what I'm talking about because we talk all the time. I don't talk about everything with everybody. But today has been a great day for me in my mind. It's lessening and lessening because I'm understanding, I'm getting revelation on how to combat the devil and his lies. And it's resting in God. It's okay to talk to yourself if you have to. I do it a lot. But every time the devil throws a thought in my mind about something, not my responsibility, talk to the Lord, I follow him. He's my caretaker. He's my father. Got a problem? Well, talk to him. You think the devil's going to talk to him? <laughs> as soon as you say that, he backs off because he knows. He's already been defeated. <clears throat> Lord, I just release peace right now. In my brothers and sisters, God. I release your peace right now. Ones that are watching on internet, YouTube live, I release peace right now in their lives. Lord, you sent your son Jesus, our Savior, to shed his blood on the cross for us. He took our pain, he took sickness, he took disease, he took mental torment. He took everything that's not of God, everything that's evil, everything that's death, everything. He took it upon his body, the word says, that we should not have to have it. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, your word brings healing. Your word of truth brings salvation. Your word brings life. And so, Lord, as we, as the body of Christ, Come together and learn how to love one another. Learn how to rest in you. Learn how to seek you. Learn how to just sit quietly at your feet. Learn how to pray. Learn how to obey. As we do that, Lord, I thank you that, Father God, you give us revelation and wisdom and knowledge in areas in our life that we need to know, God, because we want to change. We want to change, Father. We want old mindsets ripped out. We want, Father God, just your ways deposited in us. Let that word just grow deep. Let the roots grow deep on the inside of us, God. And Lord, I speak peace. Today has been nothing but peace today. As we grab your hand and as we walk with you, Father, I thank you that you lead us into the destiny, Lord. Jeremiah said that you, that, 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 that Father, you said that you created us. You predestined us, our lives, while we were in our mother's womb, Lord. And I thank you in Jesus' name that the plan and purpose and call is fulfilled in everyone's life in this place, Lord. Use us, Father, for your glory. 
Oh God, change us from glory to glory to glory, Lord. Father, you fought for us. You fought for us. And it's our job to follow you. And as we follow you, you'll meet every need. As we follow you and our hearts towards you, the Bible says that a good man's steps are ordered of the Lord. A man's heart after God, you order his steps. So Lord, I release the peace of God. I release the strength of God. I thank you that every need is met in people's lives, God. I thank you, fathers. Yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. We draw on your favor tonight. We draw on your grace tonight. And we say out of our mouths right now, Lord, that we have favor with you, God, and favor with man. And we trust that word, Lord. We trust that tonight. I thank you for supplying uh, places for people to live, God. I thank you for supplying uh, a, a, a job, Lord God. I thank you for supplying every need that they have, Father God. I thank you that you supply it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let me say this before I move on here. Is, I don't know, I heard the word broken toe. I don't know if that's anybody in here. And maybe, that, is there anybody online, maybe? Uh, no, but um, uh, Jessica, um, she's got a... Uh, Broken uh, pinky toe. Not Jessica. Uh, uh, goes oh, there's insurance. somebody online or somebody uh, you no, know? Somebody I know. Somebody you know yeah. the broken pinky toe. Anybody else have a broken toe? Maybe a family member with a broken toe or something? I don't know. You? It's still kind of a little swollen, but I, I did it like two months ago. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. And you're still having problems with it a little bit? Anyone on Periscope on prayer, just speak up. It would. <laughs> All right, well, let me go pray for you, Josie. Let me just pray for Josie, guys. Just stay connected here. You know, I hear I hear those words, and i got to give them because they're a reason. So, Father, in Jesus' name, right now, Lord, thank you for mending Josie's toe right now, Lord. I thank you that it points straight, not west, any longer, Lord. And, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands in the glory right now for a little while. Before we go, we don't have to be in a big hurry. You have to leave. That's okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the glory, Lord. Thank you for the healing glory. You're here, Jesus. Your healing angels are here, Lord. Your presence are here. We thank you for it, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for their glory, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we worship you, Lord. We thank you that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Lord. We rejoice. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Yeah. See, glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. Yeah. And it says, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm shouting victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. On my way to heaven, shouting victory. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus has set us free. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You know, I believe, I believe that heaven's a lot like Sister Liz. But that's how they act in heaven. Seriously. I guarantee you that's how they act in heaven. 
They're not sitting around the campfire singing Kumbaya, I guarantee you that. They're rejoicing, yeah? They're, they're rejoicing. I'd rather hang around people like that than hang around religious people, I'm telling you right now. Because that sets me free, that changes my life. Amen? Yes. Let's stand. Praise God. Good way to end a service. The peace of God, the strength of God, the joy of the Lord, the healing power of Jesus. That's a good way. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love you guys. <laughs> Woo! So I'm going to drive them home. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, I just speak blessing over your people tonight, God. Thank you for giving us divine appointments this week, Lord. Use us for your glory this week. Use us to decree and declare the glory of the kingdom of God. And Lord, we just say this week, we will drink this week the new wine. Hallelujah. Get us drunk during the day, Lord. Just spontaneous drunken moments, God. Just whack us during the day, Lord God. Let us rest and just drink in you and rejoice in you and be joyful. Hallelujah. I thank you for it. filling us with your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed night. We'll see you later on. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord. Praise God. <laughs>